Hello everyone and welcome to this new episode of the Angular and Firestore database in which we are going to start building the front-end application by building the different components, services and the styling of the different components to uh, communicate or to store data within the uh, uh, Firestore database. So to start we are just going to create uh, some folders here and one of them is the components folder. So we're going to put our components there and another folder for the services. Then lastly, another folder for the models. We are going to begin by the model. So we're going to create a new model. It's going to be called to-do.model.ts. And this model will be just an interface. We're just going to export an interface called to-do. And the interface or the to-do will contain title type string contain the is completed of type boolean due date of type date and priority of type string so we are just going to have these for now and we can extend it later so of type string so we can decide at this point to say that the priority is actually either high or medium or low so that's it for the model we are going to uh, create the components to uh, let's say have the list of the to do's and create to do so we have only two components for now it's just the listing and the creation so we're just going to say cd components or app src app component then within that folder we're going to just generate two components ngc for generate component we're going to call to do list and then to do create so these are the two components that we're going to have and by default the routing will go to that uh, component to the default component which is the to do list so to do that, you just go to app.routes, then add a new entry there with a path, nothing. And when nothing is introduced, we are just going to introduce a component here, which is the to-do list. So that's it. Now we can uh, run our application and start building the UI of our to-do list and the create or to-do create component. So to do that, we're just going to new, have a new terminal here, and that terminal will just say ng serve open. And then we'll wait for the application to start. Just going to navigate to localhost here. And that's my new application. I'm just going to clear this up so we don't need this, let's say, default web page that we have in the index.html or it's actually under the app component so we're just going to remove all these and just put the rotor outlet in which we're going to inject the rotated uh, components so here we have to-do list is working we're going to just style the component for the to-do list and then we're going to work on the create uh, to-do and these are the two components that uh, our application will use to create and maintain or manage the to-do list so we are going to start with the um, to-do list component and to do that you just have to uh, clean this up and then we are having h1 for the title we're going to just say to do app this is my to-do app that we're going to use so just go back and see this is going to be that and then we're going to use, uh, to use a bootstrap container to, to, to center everything into the center so class container and then we're going to have our um, to-do list container if you would so the to-do list container will be just a div with a class called to-do list container we're going to just introduce some styling to that and it's actually going to be a mat elevation so this comes from the material or angular material mat elevation 
Z3 or Z2 or Z4. So it's just going to be an elevated container. And um, I think that's all for this, at least for now. And just we just introduce some padding of level three. And let's just take a look at the application to see what happens. So this is to do the title and then it's centered in the center. Now we are going to introduce the to do list here. So we show the list of to do's. And to do that, we are going to start by introducing some fake data just for the sake of testing some to do's that we're going to enter manually or just to use macro or any other online tool to generate some JSON files. So to do that, you just say to do list equal to and then you open up a JSON, um, a JSON uh, object. So we will have a title. So you can always decide on the type. It's going to be to do that interface. And then we have title. So our title here. So any title and you're just going to have the, the, the data entered. So I'll pause the video to make it shorter. And then I come back when I finish the list of to do's. So now our fake to do's, to do's are ready. We can try to show them in the application interface and see how it looks before we connect it to the Firestore uh, service or before building the Firestore service to uh, connect to real data. So let's go ahead and loop through these this list and show it uh, so as follows. So we're going to just have a div of type or class of math elevation Z3 or Z2 in this case to make it smaller. And then we're going to call that to do item container. So we're going to style these once we're done building this UI. So first thing is going to be showing the title of each to do. So we're going to just have ng4 to go through that. Let item off to do list. And of course, we're going to show that. Simple, simply just show the title for now. Item dot title. So of course the ng4 since it's um, since it's standalone component, we need to introduce the common model or common module. So common modules from Angular Core. So now it should be able to use ng4 without problem. So if we go back, we can see that our to do is already there. So we have five to dos. We're going to introduce some styling to them so that makes it really uh, like um, professional. So to begin with, we just need to introduce some kind of padding here of pipe two. Then after that, so you can see now that you have it a little bit bigger, you can introduce more padding. And then after that, you have to introduce the uh, icon or the button to show whether if it's completed or not. And that's actually simple. So first we need to introduce the mat icon module from uh, Angular Materials. So you go just to components here. Then you go to icons. We need to integrate this into our standalone component. So you just take it from there, dump it here, and then introduce it in the import uh, array. That's it. Now we can use icons. And to do that, you just say mat icon. And then for the icon, we'll have two icons. So these comes from uh, Google icon, actually. So it's going to be a radio that is checked or unchecked, depending on whether if it's completed or not. So I'll take this and dump it here. Then we're making this display flex. And we're just going to have a gap of two between the two elements that we have here. So now if you go back, you will see that you have, uh, it starts to, to build up. So you'll have that kind of to do. And then when you click, it should be completed. And when, when it's uh, incomplete, it will uh, be a circle. And when, when it's complete, it will become a check. So we are going to change that right now. So, and to do that, you just go to the application here and then introduce two different icons based on whether it's completed or not. And we're going to use the completed attribute. So let's just go back to the icons to choose the other icon. We're going to just say check. And we are going to use this actually. So this is uh, like a radio button, but check this time. So we're just going to introduce it here. And then of course, here we can say ngf item dot completed negate that and then ng if it's completed we show that icon 
So then here, when we show that icon, it means that it's completed. So let's go back and check. So as you can see, these are the completed one and these are the incomplete ones. So we are going to make it a little bit uh, different here. So we can say that this class is text primary or maybe text success based on our preferences. So this is this is cool, but you can always make it success or whatever color like you like. You can always style it differently uh, besides using the bootstrap classes. So that's that. And um, now we are get good to go. So we make this as a button so that we can have the cursor when we hover here, we would like to see, see it as a button. So we can change the role to button for both of them. And we're going to introduce some kind of action when you click what happened and uh, whatever. So, so now, as you can see, when you hover, you will see that the cursor changes to as if you are clicking on a button or something. So we're going to introduce the actions later when we finish the project, or we can introduce them anytime, actually. So that's it for the list of to-dos. We can show the date somewhere here on the bottom. We can just do that. So we go here and then change, like put small and put the due date. So due date do you on then you put the date so item dot do you date then you can choose date here and then you choose the pipe medium date if we come back we will we'll drop, drop probably just introduce some kind of paragraph here and then font with bold font weight bold actually then we introduce this here put both of them inside the div so that the display flex will take them into uh, into a single as a single block actually so we'll see it right now in action so as you can see this is good and we can introduce remove the the, the, the margin of that um, p element so we can just say p one or zero maybe depending on how it looks so this is good enough, I think, for now. So now we're going to introduce some styling to this, make it rounded and uh, maybe with some uh, other um, borders. So we can take this and start building that or adding some styles to it. So it's going to be border radius is 10 pixel. Same thing for the other one, which is the main, let's say, container. We would like them to have a border of radius 10. Makes it nice and clear. As you can see here, all good. And then we're going to introduce uh, the delete button here. To do that, you just need to go to this one here and introduce a new uh, button here. But to do that, first we need to get the button module from Angular Material. So you go just to button then introduce this into your component since it's standalone you can always integrate that here and import the mod button module so that's it now we will be able to use any of these tiles or any of these buttons so i'm going to stick to probably icon makes it simpler we just use the mat icon button so we will need any of this so i'll take that and change whatever i want so i go put it here and we don't need these. We are going to say um, maybe delete or cancel. Cancel would do a great job. So I know that cancel will give us a nice button or a nice um, icon or maybe. So cancel will give us this one here. So let's see if it's good. So as you can see, it's there already, but we're going to push it to the end. And to do that, you just need to introduce some kind of margin start of auto so it will take this and put it push it to the back and then you can say the class text danger or maybe color warm so this will give us us and we can always change this to highlight off for example i think there is another icon that is better than this so cancel or maybe remove so i guess it's uh, Close remove. So I know that there is highlight off here. Highlight off that give a nicer icon. Actually, so let's go back and see. And see, it's it's better than the um, 
uh, then the delete or the cancel. So now that's that for this. So these are uh, this is UI. We are probably going to start working on uh, these actions and prepare them for the Firestore. And to do that, we will introduce three or four different actions. So the first one, mark as completed, and it will take an item of type to do, and it will change the item dot completed is equal to true. Of course, now here we are going to save it into our database. Save the to-do item in Firestore. We're going to implement this later. Same thing when we want to mark as n completed. We're going to say false and then save into the Firestore. And same thing when we delete, we would like to introduce that into Firestore or delete from Firestore, delete to do. So then we are going just to delete it in Firestore. From Firestore. These are the different actions that we're going to have and also add a new node if you would. We will introduce that soon. So add new not note to do actually this will open up a dialogue or will open up a, a, a button sheet bottom sheet if you want that's what we're going to use so now we are going to introduce these actions in the, their uh, respective components so the first one would be to mark as when we click here we mark this as complete and we introduce the item as parameter same thing we are going to do the same thing for the mark as incompleted and it's actually this one here. and then the delete will take care of deleting actually that item so we will just say click delete to do and that to do is happen to be our our item so yeah, that's it now. I think we are ready to go ahead and uh, start working on. So when you click right now, it seems like it's working, but it's not storing the data. So when I refresh, all the data is gone. We are going to introduce some kind of um, uh, line through uh, styling when it is completed. So we'll do that through the class. So here, if that is completed, we introduce some kind of class here. So ng class. Let's say completed to do. And that happened only when the item is completed. That's going to be into in the title, actually not there. So we'll put it at the title level. And we are going to introduce the styling for this. So when it is completed, we have a, a text decoration line through. That's it. Now when I save, I'll check that the completed ones will have a line through on them. So when you click, it changed the status. And like I mentioned, so it's not storing yet. We're going to introduce the storage soon. So now uh, our to-do list is ready to go. We probably going to introduce some kind of styling there to make it look better, but I think it's good enough so far.